all right welcome back welcome back welcome back so let's talk about women and money i want to talk about women and money for a few minutes before we jump uh, into the main topics of the day there's an article that i saw and uh the article is about the five myths about women and money that need i, I saw this article on the washington post and it's about the five myths about women and money that need uh that need to be debunked you know and i thought you know what let's talk about it because uh clearly a lot of things are changing you know a lot of things are changing and a lot of people are not paying attention uh particularly men are not paying attention so let's talk about the five myths about women and money that need to be debunked and you might agree you might disagree let me know your thoughts in the chat um, i i only read maybe the first paragraph i'm like okay i'm curious uh we've come a long way ladies that's what i guess is a woman that's writing this yes men overwhelmingly control wall street and the financial firms that hold and invest our money overwhelmingly do you agree with that that's true still very true they're still on average paid more than women doing the same job okay so we have a lot of men that would disagree with that but in the same token they want to talk about in the same breath they want to talk about how men control the world uh it's a lot of indomie generation people that are confused but this is actually a fact they are still on average paid more than women doing the same job is that ever going to change i don't think so honestly i don't there's too many forces that makes that exactly the way it is all right hit that like button i beg hit that like button thank you i appreciate you hit that like button all right so and when you see a commercial about financial advising it's often a man giving advice i'm not going to give you advice today i just want us to rub minds to get together okay uh but james brown was right when he sang this is a man's world. this is a man's world but it wouldn't be nothing nothing without a woman or a girl no this isn't just a man's financial world since women generally outlive men all right a lot of women disagree with this uh but when it supports their narrative right but somebody's saying it since women generally outlive men a great deal of wealth is expected to transfer to them according to a 2020 report by mckinsey by 2030 american women we're talking about american women now, or women that live in america by 2030 american women could be controlling much of the 30 trillion dollars in assets held by baby boomers okay uh yet misconceptions still linger about women's financial acumen despite increasing numbers of them managing the money in their households because they are single divorced or widowed all right so let me debunk five long-held myths about women and money so these are the myths myth number one women are more likely to be spend thrifts okay so women spend more money on nonsense that's what it sounds like do you agree with that or you actually agree that it's a myth is that a myth you know how to manage money better hold on one second let me see here all right yeah um women are more likely to be spendthrift when we when will the stereotype of the woman with a shoe shopping addiction die uh, is that that's that's not a myth how many shoes how many pair of shoes do you have right now ladies how many pair of shoes do you have right now i bet you it's more than the number of pair of shoes of uh, of an average man okay so it might be a myth the spend thrift part but the the shoe shopping part is that a myth mm. spending is different of course but women aren't more likely to be spending wildly a lending tree analysis of federal data found that single men outspent single women forty three thousand dollars and two hundred and three dollars to thirty eight thousand eight hundred eight hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars per year on average single men i will spend single women okay the findings based on the bureau of labor statistics 2021 consumer expeditious survey also showed men spent more on food four thousand eight hundred and sixteen dollars a year versus four thousand 
446 for the ladies. There's not much difference. But I guess it's interesting to know that it's almost equal. Men outspent women two to one on alcohol at five hundred and forty-two dollars a year, compared with two hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Uh, maybe they are buying women drinks at the club. Maybe, maybe. So they're doing what is traditionally accepted that you should buy the ladies' drinks, right? And how many times have you bought a man a drink? <laughs> Wait, till I, I agree and disagree. You agree, disagree. Uh, see the shoes. The shoes, I agree. Shoes just have a way of making you happy. See, so it's not exactly a myth. So maybe it's a bad example, right? Uh, I am a jebu from birth, not into shoes. Really, that would be a first that I'm hearing that. Mm. Shoes make us very happy. Okay, all right. So the article writer, maybe they used a bad example. But he's giving some other examples. The alcohol part I can understand because men buy women drinks, right? So it makes sense that men spend about five forty-two dollars a year compared with two hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Now, okay, the ladies did spend more on clothes, six hundred and seventy-one dollars annually for apparel and services, while men spent three hundred and ninety-eight dollars. Okay, so men outspent women on other entertainment, which includes indoor exercise equipment and athletic shoes they spent an average of 675 dollars versus 141 dollars for women okay so that's that's the first myth the myth number two women are bad at salary negotiation uh oh they're saying that's a myth employed men make more than their female counterparts at every at every wage level though the pay gap widens at the higher end of the spectrum as reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, women's median uh, earnings were 83% of men in full-time wage and salary rose in 2021. That comes to $912 a week compared with $998. People often attribute the wage gap in part to women's inability to negotiate a higher salary. But being too intimidated to ask for money isn't just a woman's thing. Oh, so women are bold? When it comes to asking for money when asked about their most recent hiring and i quote most u.s workers who are not self-employed say they did not ask for higher pay than what was initially offered according to pew research um in fact 60 percent of uh, workers settled for the first offer pew found the big shift in the coming decade a woman sorry women will hold greater economy power than in previous generations this series captured the increasingly influential role women play in the american financial last landscape all right among those who did ask for higher wages men were only slightly more inclined 32 percent compared with 28 percent and since women start behind men in the salary department even if they ask for more money there's still a pay gap Similar results were found when researchers at the University of Southern California used a virtual agent to test how participants negotiated for a software engineering position. It turns out, regardless of gender, 43% of participants took what was offered. People aren't good at negotiating in general, one of the researchers said. Now, that's my personal opinion too. I think in general, people struggle with negotiations in general. So, um... I'm not sure if that's a woman or a man's thing. Mm -mm -mm. Let me see here. Mara says, uh, men's items are bigger ticket items, but women are very susceptible to marketing. Same as religion. Many small items add up. Mm. Yes, they do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think men and women spend differently. Absolutely, of course. But we all spend, Sha. And we're trying to compare now so we can keep an eye out. And we're spending the most money in this house. <laughs> Myth number three. Women are not as good investors as men. Do you agree or disagree with that? Women are not as good investors as men. This person that wrote the article, let me give them proper credit if there's a name here. Uh, let me see if there's a name. Yeah, Michelle Singletary. Michelle Singletary. 
All right, so do you agree that women are not as good investors as men? I think there's a confusion between uh, the number of people that are investing or predominantly who is doing the most investing and actually if they are good at it. You know, D Love said, I disagree with the investment part. Mm -hmm. um, Maria says, I'm not good with negotiations too, but I am improving. Next go round, I will do better. If you want to get better with negotiations, get a book called Never Split the Difference. It's by a guy called Something Ross. Okay, I read that book last month, and that book is extremely, you will see a lot of correlations with uh, relationships as well. Okay. Um, more first, I disagree with the investment statement. Men take risk with investing whilst women are more safe. All right, let's see what she says. Investment is all about risk. And while it's true that women tend to be more risk averse than men when investing, that works in their favor. Okay, they lead men, albeit by a small margin when it comes to investment returns, according to a 2021 Fidelity investment report i found my wealth building people we agree getting rich is a slow race yes anyway that's partly because uh women don't trade as uh often as men okay so women don't trade as often as men an analysis of more than 5 million fidelity investment accounts from 2011 to 2020 found an average that women outperformed their male counterparts by 40 base points wow or 0.4 percent that is crazy over time that small difference can add up to big money anyway so uh she's disagreeing so the, the fact that men take more risk does not equal us to being better investors i think that's across the board in general the fact that you as an individual take more risk or you are you know you have uh hunger for risk you have more tolerance for risk does not equate to uh, you're performing better. A lot of people misconstrue that. They might say things like, uh, you know, scare money, don't make money. You know, and people that say that, they tend to lose all their money. Anyway, good point. Uh, myth number four, women are more spooked about the stock market than men. They're saying that's a myth. She's saying that's a myth. Uh, do you agree? Are you afraid of the stock market? Are you afraid of the stock market? Let me see if I can find a link to this stuff so I can share. Never split the difference. Uh, good book, good book. Yep. Never split the difference. Um, negotiating as if your life depended on it. It's written by an ex Navy, no, an ex FBI negotiator guy. I post a link. Why not? I love the book. So there you have it. Let me see here. All right, I'm trying to, I'm monitoring the time today. All right, there you go. All right, so D Love says, um, so I just posted a link in the chat for you guys. Uh, never split the difference. Dilo says, I'm only afraid of crypto. Never participated because I don't invest in something I don't understand. That makes sense. You should never invest in anything you don't understand. Uh, if everybody is however talking about it and it seems like uh, an opportunity may be passing you by, then invest time first in understanding it. And then you can consider if you want to. You might just find that you, you don't want to anyway. But you should still be educated on anything that you're hearing a lot of noise around it you know you should still be educated even if it's as simple as say hey no no i'm not interested just to be able to be educated when you're saying i'm not interested in it right so uh let's see here so myth number four women are spooked about uh, more than half more than half of women women are more spooked they're more spooked about the stock market than men more than half of women 51 percent who invest in stocks say they typically stay the course when the market experiences a dip, aha, this is another, it's very similar to the last myth, right? They stay the course. Men are very, you know, they get emotional, you know, because they comp they tend to discount emotions. They're never emotional until they start acting mad if they lost a little bit of money in the stock market, right? 
um when the market expresses a dip compared with 43 percent of men according to fidelity so women stay the course and men tend to flake out by the way women are increasingly investing in the stock market including outside of their workplace 401k plans the fidelity study found that 67 percent of women are now investing outside of their retirement account that's a significant jump from the 43 percent fidelity recorded in 2018 we're seeing more news like this, uh, seeing more studies reflecting this, so we should pay attention. Uh, myth number five, women are too emotional to be good money managers. You agree with that or you disagree? Do you agree with that or you disagree? Most firstly, I think afraid, uh, quote unquote afraid, is probably the wrong word. Maybe just less interested or not as attractive to a woman, a woman shot. Mm-hmm. But we're seeing increasing numbers of women taking, uh, they're taking, they're participating in money matters, which is a good thing. Daddy Buffet, Daddy, Daddy, <laughs> Daddy Buffet, Daddy Buffet taught you well. Jesus Christ. All mates, we have stomachs of steel. Mm. I think people underestimate women in, in many ways, you know. Um, obviously, men and women are different. I always say that anyway. But that is not a negative thing. It's just difference. That means it's like you're getting with another person romantically and understanding that they're, because they're different from you, it's not that. Can, that's a strength. That's actually a part of the strength for the relationship because there are certain areas where you yield to them and back and vice versa, right? So, uh, more chances disagree. One million and trillion and million thousand percent. Jesus. All right. I actually invested in stock market at a low risk. Interested. Okay. Interesting. Uh, what does that mean? What do you mean though? What do you mean that you in in invested in stock market at a low risk? What do you mean? Uh, Misty say hello everyone. In today's topic on investment, what's the more bad you paint? We're getting to it. We'll cover, during the live shows, we'll cover a lot of topics. That will be, uh, we'll get, we're going to get there. Okay welcome misty we're always talking anything that can help us improve that's what we talk about all right so women are too emotional to be good money managers myth number five more than half of u.s adults 52 percent say they stress about money have worrisome thoughts lose sleep and are depressed because of financial worries according to a 2023 survey by bankrate.com that's up from 42 percent a year earlier oh wow well that makes sense you know uh people are stressed with money it makes sense that people will be stressed about money in the pandemic and after inflation reached a 40 year high in 2022 and interest rates on mortgages auto loans and credit cards soared um women worried more than men bank rates found 46 percent of women said financial concerns had a negative impact on their mental health compared to 38 percent of men that's just the difference between men and women again that translates to other behaviors that's not necessarily positive or negative on either side of the gender none of which means you can't be financially astute okay a fidelity study found that while stress is the top emotion women feel about money nearly 90 percent are taking steps to control their finances okay so because they're emotional about it maybe this that's the reason why they paying a little bit more attention right emotions in of itself is not a bad thing emotions is not a bad thing right it's just depends on what you do with them well it becomes bad if you pretend that they're not there right Hello everyone, it's still okay. We already covered that. Uh, low risk meaning money I don't mind losing. Okay, I see what you mean. Yep, that makes sense. All right. So, um, a fidelity study found that while stress, okay, and when they don't know what to do, women are more likely to ask for help. Oh, I talk about that here all the time. It's okay to ask for help. When they don't know what they're doing, they are more likely to ask for help. And men are more likely to just, uh, I don't want to ask for help, you know. It's something to be aware of. I think it's natural to men, but if you're aware of it, if you need help, you ask for help. 
Because you just know that it's just your nature that's preventing you from asking for help. It's the coconut head thing, it's pride, it's ego, and it doesn't really, it's not helpful. You know, it's not helpful. Uh, but that's really what women are also attracted to when it comes to romantic relationships. So it's just about finding the balance and knowing when to turn it off and when to turn it on. Or, well, you don't get to turn it on because you're naturally that way. But you have to know when to turn it off if you're a man. Okay. But uh, women are more likely to ask for help. Like, why don't you help me with this? Right. That is a positive thing. Fidelity. Fidelity has seen a 19% increase in women reaching out for financial guidance since 2019. So just go look at the, probably probably a good way to look at it, financial advisors. Who are most of their clients, right? Or what are most of the people that are inside of a church that are following prophets around? Jesus. Anyway, compared with the 16% increase among men, I tell women all the time, don't underestimate your ability to handle money even though men dominated the currency we use what do you guys think about that you know do you want more of this kind of uh, segments uh, i personally want to do more of this kind of segment because money is one of the easiest things to point fingers at when your relationship fails did you notice what i just said money is one of the easiest things to point fingers at there's always going to be something around you you can point finger at one of the easiest thing that people point finger at as as uh, indicated in this in the statistics and data and studies is that finances is causing divorce finance is not causing divorce finances are one of the easiest thing to point fingers at but yes uh, bad finances can influence and trigger uh that, that a downward spiral downward um demise of a relationship as well so should we be talking a little bit about you know about 10 minutes maybe 10 minutes talk about money I'm not. I'm taking an options course at my job next month. That's awesome. Options are beautiful, but you have to know what you're doing. They're also highly risky, uh, for research purposes only. Okay, they're very risky as well. Uh, over time, I'm actually made. Uh, I've actually made my capital back time uh, times a couple of doubles. That's awesome. Love it. Love it. I love those testimonies. Uh, Toby and Tribe says, I feel generally Africans could be better negotiators than Westerners because we are used to pricing things down in market. Negotiating in Africa is a lifestyle. Yeah, it has to be. Shake by Jale, shake by $20. Jale, Jale, and call you know. Like, hey, why are you you down, son, Jari? <laughs> right? Yeah, that, you're right about that. You know, uh, a lot of uh, these things, small, small things, that already have like stunt uh, prescriptions. Prescript, What's the word I'm looking for? They're already priced. So you don't get to negotiate them. But in Africa, you can negotiate literally anything, you know? So, but, you know, negotiating gets tougher. Like, for example, in that book, one of the examples he used is, you know, um, somebody being held hostage, right? Obviously, FBI guy, right? You, you learn a, a whole different level of negotiation and how it applies to real life. It's just, it's one of the highest values valued skills you can have negotiations you know but good point um interesting overview as you work in the industry she works in the industry i bet she does love this new segment she loves it oh love it love it okay listen if you know more about money you probably know more than i do you know i'm just a student right so we're gonna keep talking about money i'm just a student you know, but I, I love it. So those were the five myths about women and money that need to be uh, debunked. All right. Now, um, let me know if you went through this and you're watching this as a replay later on. Uh, let me know what you disagree, why you disagree. Uh, gentlemen, if you're watching the replay, let me know your thoughts about this. Uh, I would like to get your thoughts on this as well. All right. With that being said, let's move on to the next segment. I'll be back in about 20 seconds. Your love that I've been missing. I saw your hugs, you touching and kissing me. Love on the floor, the coach in the kitchen. One love enough, we done enough. 